Okay, Council, I'm going to call this meeting to order. The books have been distributed to you um, at your desks. Uh, refer you to the printouts that were in the front pocket. And uh, um, I believe that my job at this point is to turn the uh, discussion over to um, our General Ma Manager of Finance, Mr. John Innes. Thank you, Warden. Uh, good morning, Council. Uh, welcome to the introduction and the unveiling of the draft 2016 budget. As has been our uh, habit and practice for uh, oh, almost 15 years now, I think this is actually the 15th of these that I've done, uh, we are providing you with an overview of the budget uh, so that when you go to review the document before you, that you have some context in which to, to take a look at the numbers and the results that are being presented to you today. So what has happened since last year? Well, some things have been positive. Uh, the OMPF program actually was changed to uh, better reflect the reality of small rural municipalities. Uh, we've made some progress on SAMS. Uh, SAMS uh, has been a difficult file, and uh, although uh, it has been challenging, it continues to get better every day. MPAC has implemented recommendations with regards to the small uh, or special purpose of business property assessment review, which is always a mouthful to say. The province has also been consulting with uh, municipalities regarding program funding changes. In other words, in the past, it used to be that they would simply announce to us that a program was changed. We would have no opportunity to have input into that. Now what happens is they do speak with us and ask us about what the implications of it are. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to follow what the advice that we call them, but at least they do talk to us. And the other interesting part and exciting news was the fact that the federal government has announced that it will fund municipal infrastructure programs. As positive as those things have been, there's also a lot of negatives. Yes, uh, the OMPF program better reflects the reality of small rural municipalities, but they still cut $15 million out of it this past year, and the vast majority of municipalities in Lampton County saw a 15% decrease in 16 compared to 15. We're still awaiting for uh, a solution on how to value landfills, and for uh, Councillor Case and uh, Councillor Arnold knows we've been working on this for a long time and it's very frustrating that uh, we haven't been able to come up with a solution to this yet. The provincial government still has a deficit. Therefore, even though they're talking to us about uh, changes to funding programs, they're also looking for ways to reduce the amount of money that they flow to us. The federal government hasn't given us any details of what, how and what they are going to provide funding for. And recently, we also discovered that uh, the new OPP billing model includes additional fees that uh, caught many of us by surprise. And although SAMS is getting better, it's still far from being uh, totally resolved, and we continue to have difficulties and uh, do not get reports off of it that any financial system should be providing us. What has the county been doing during this period of time? Well, I think one thing that we have to celebrate was the Masterworks of the Beaverbrook Art Gallery exhibition. Uh, that was uh, extremely well attended. The committee PM, or pardon me, committee AM this morning uh, received an update on that, indicating that uh, the uh, attendance was almost double what the original expectations were. There was in excess of $50,000 worth of donations received, and that we attracted people from all over Canada and the United States. So very much of a success there. Warden McDougall has continued the uh, previous work of previous wardens with regards to AMO and uh, Western Wardens Caucus to push the province to recognize how its policies are impacting on municipalities. Warden and county senior staff, we continue to help and try and support our area municipalities in any way that we can, which means uh, providing details and support for uh, delegations to Roma OGRA, into AMO and also working on any other initiatives that come forward. And lastly, staff have continued to pro work diligently on a number of working groups that I've listed here to try and make sure that the voice of Lambton County and its area municipalities is being heard by the ministries in Toronto. In 2016, property assessment uh, has been relatively stable. This is the fourth year of the current assessment cycle. This means that uh, in 2006, uh, at the end of 2016, for 2017 through 2020, we're going to have a new roll returned with updated values. 
Preliminary information suggests that farm properties could be going up as much as 30 percent and that uh, our regular properties are going to go up approximately 10 percent. So that's a shift across the board. That's what it is in general. How they will impact individual properties is yet to be seen. The other thing that that means is to come 2017, we're going to have all of the decreases flow through in one year, but it's going to take four years for the increases to flow back in again. There's been no change in tax policy going forward. Uh, the province initiated discussions last year about ending tax capping and about making uh, some reforms to the way in which vacancy rebates on commercial industrial properties are provided. But we still have not seen anything specific on that. We're hoping that in this year going forward that we'll begin to see some changes on that, which will have the impact of uh, stabilizing the tax roll and the dollars that we generate from that uh, better than we've been able to do in the past. Staff continue to work on proactive appeals. In other words, we do not sit back and wait until a property is appealed to respond to it. When we identify a property that the assessment is either too low or too high, and yes, we do look at it if it is too high, we will take uh, the initiative to go and see if we can correct that to bring the value into what it should be, because our goal is always to make sure that every property is paying its reasonable and fair share of the assessment burden in the county. The change in weighted assessment this year was 3.33%, up significantly from the 2.79% last year. That is why the real growth in weighted assessment this year is 0.9%, which means that we had almost $620,000 worth of new revenue that could be achieved from the roll without impacting on the tax rate. As far as debt is concerned, at the end of 2015, we had continued to reduce debt as we have in the past. As a matter of fact, going forward, if we follow the recommendations that we've built into the budget, and including taking into account the six-year contractual grant to Lambton College, we will be looking at a 26.7% debt utilization ratio. That is, uh, as you will recall, we've indicated in the past, our goal is always to make sure that we are below 30% and we usually try and match uh, closer to the 25 than the 30 percent range, so we are again on target with the policies and the directions that's been given to us by you before. We are anticipating that we are going to, or we are suggesting that there's going to be roughly $2.4 million in new debt uh, in, incurred in 2016. That is for eight projects. We have one project in facilities, which is again to finish off uh, a number of projects in this building. We have one in long-term care. We have two in the museums. Both of them are looking to do some work with regards to the HVAC systems, which is to better protect the collections that we have there. And we have four bridge projects in public works that we're looking to finance as well. IT has its own revolving line of credit. Uh, it is allowed to draw on it once a year. It uses this money to uh, continue to refresh the uh, equipment that we use we'll be looking to draw $160,000 down on that this year. All in all, our external rating agencies and the province continue to uh, consider us to be a low borrower. And as was, I told you earlier this year, the county's credit rating has been reaffirmed at AA minus stable, which is uh, an extremely, um, how would we put it, good uh, rating for our county and an organization this size. There's a number of components that are built into the budget. I'm not going to go through this list, but what we have done here is that we have identified areas where there has been room made available in the budget because costs have been eliminated. We've also talked about where uh, costs have been added to the budget. We've talked about uh, where we have been able to achieve uh, changes in funding that provide more funding towards the bottom line. So, uh, and we also indicate here the amount that is going into reserves. The key here is that this 3.867 going into reserves, this is the amount that you instruct us to build into the budget each year when we present it to you. In addition to those specific dollar impacts, there are other things that you need to take into account with regards to the budget as well. The first is the fact that we have provided you with updates to the budget impacts and social services trend reports that you were given during the special budget meeting in November. Those are located in the front of your budget binders behind the copy of the presentation slides that you have today. 
The budget has also been developed with the express goal to balance respect for the taxpayer with the need to maintain programs. In other words, when we put the budget together, we're trying to ensure that we are not taking any more money from the pockets of the ratepayers of Lambton County than is absolutely necessary in order to maintain existing programs and services uh, that are in the budget and have been there and we've been directed to provide. Program funding for the replacement of our existing TCAs is, allowing, uh, is built into the budget as well. That's uh, the uh, funded amortization report that I give to you every year. And that is allowing us to make some progress towards bec becoming sustainable and being able to replace our tangible capital of assets. That is extremely important going forward because if we do not do that, it has the, uh, two impacts. One is it reduces the overall value of the corporation because as an uh, asset is used, its value will decrease. And the second thing it does is when we do not replace these assets on a regular uh, program basis, we create a deficit. And as you know, the deficit in the funding and the replacement of TCAs is already significant in this province and, as a matter of fact, in this country as well. Lastly, we still have not been able to confirm specifically what the funding coming from the province for many of our programs are going to be. For many of the programs in social services and in public health, it is necessary to enter into a funding a contract with the province each year. The province really doesn't worry about those <clears throat> until after it has set its own budget for the coming year, which means that we do not get those results usually until April, sometimes as late as September, and I think one year it was even November before we got them. So what we do is we build the budget based on the best information that we have and what we believe is going to be the changes in those numbers going forward. With the recent announcement that the province is going to bring down its budget next Thursday, we're hopeful that we might actually be able to have some concrete details and have some better data by the time you get together to debate this budget in March as well. The department budget uh, overviews, um, this slide here is just a refresher to make sure that everybody is aware of what they are trying to tell you. We have added an additional bit of information this year. If you look at the sheet, you'll see that at the very end of it, it indicates the manager responsibility and their contact information. This is to ensure that if you have a question about a specific program or, uh, or departmental budget, you know exactly who it is that you can contact in order to get the answer to your questions. Uh, again, the idea here is to try and make uh, the document more user-friendly and more accessible for everybody as they're going forward. As far as the cash requirements and the impact on taxation is concerned, I'm going to concentrate on the taxation line on this slide. You'll see that as far as our operating budget is concerned, we're actually asking for less dollars from the tax base in 2016 than we did in 2015. Our non-TCA projects, which is uh, mainly our contributions to reserves, is going up by basically uh, the factor that is impacted by, uh, by the change in levy that happens from year to year. So in other words, each year the amount of, uh, or the percentage of the levy changes, that drives the dollars that we have for a number of these things. The other aspect that you have in here is this is the increase in the funded amortization contribution as well. As far as the TCA projects are concerned, and this is anything that you can touch and feel for the most part, uh, we have uh, the main change that you see here is the difference between funding that is available from one year to the next. Uh, the overall, the, uh, the spending uh, tends to be fairly consistent. We are up a bit this year, but again, we are trying to make sure that the spending is A, consistent with what is necessary in order to maintain funding from programs such as the gas tax, Plus, this also reflects the, uh, the introduction and the first year of the 10-year uh, capital improvement plan that you approved for social housing in November. All in all, the gross increase in taxation for 2016 is 4.24%. But you will recall that I also indicated that we had 0.9% <clears throat> in real growth. When you take that off, that means that the net impact in taxation for 2016 is 3.34 percent. Of that 3.34 percent, excuse me, <clears throat> of that 3.34 percent, 2.22 of it relates to uh, the increase in cost for existing programs and services. 
The difference between that is the new spending in the budget, which is specifically the contribution to the college and the first year, the six-year contribution you're making to that. Just some facts to remind you here. Between 2008 and 2015, expenditure, the increase in expenditures was 1.47%. The average rate of inflation was 1.52%. In other words, we always try and make sure that we keep consistent with the rate of inflation. For 2016, the most recent information we have is that depending on the source you're looking at, inflation is running between 1.74 and 2.2%. Again, the idea and what we're trying to pre uh, present here is the fact that we have brought in the increase in funding for existing programs and services at, at or near the rate of inflation, which is always our goal every year. If the budget remains unchanged from what do you have before you today, the county's 2016 tax rates will remain essentially unchanged from 2015. You'll recall that I said the tax is going on 3.34. The, uh, the uh, uh, weighted uh, assessment is going up 3.33%. This means that the cumulative uh, reduction in tax rates since 2008 is 12.01%. In other words, we do not take uh, the inflation and the automatic increase in the dollars that are there to apply to it. We try and make sure that we keep the funding as low as we possibly can. However, the numbers that you do have in front of you do not include any amounts for council grants or for items referred to budget. As far as the council grants are concerned, you currently have two that are included in the binder for you. One is for $6,000, the other is for $321,000. Uh, the one for $6,000 is not consistent with uh, the criteria you set for uh, grants. However, you always give uh, proponents the opportunity to come before you and state their case, if you would. Both of the proponents for these grants will be at your meeting on March 2nd, and they will be making presentations to you to uh, provide you with the details of why they believe you should be funding their proposal and include it in the budget for 2016. Referred to budget, at the time that we created the document before you, the only thing that we had in, the re, in that file was uh, the SWIFT project. Why do we have the SWIFT project here? Last year you agreed to uh, set aside the first year's contributions from the Opportunity and Contingencies Fund in order to uh, provide that if you got answers to the questions you were seeking from Western Wardens on this project. Uh, the second year of that, uh, there was no decision made with regards to the funding of the program for years two through five. Therefore, it is before you again because there has been no direction provided to staff with regards to the second or through fifth years of the program. Uh, there is one more item that is referred to it at the committee AM this morning, the gateway sign project with an estimated cost of $75,000 was referred to budget as well. Details of that proposal uh, will be presented to you in the agenda for at the on budget day. So you will have that before you as well. Meeting schedule, March 2nd, you have two delegations coming to see you. Again, you've already heard from TSL, you've already heard uh, from SLEP. Their funding is based on a contract and again uh, that information is in your budget uh, book and you can see that uh, and review that at your leisure. On the 16th, that is when you will review the, the document. We will have uh, the uh, bylaws available so that you could approve the budget that day if you are able to complete your uh, review and your considerations. Uh, we will again be going on the exception basis, which means in theory, if you liked everything that was before you, it only takes one motion to approve it. Um, the only time that you make another motion is if you wish to change something. On May 4th, you will get the uh, copy of the, uh, recommenda or the recommendations from tax policy and the approval of the bylaws will come from committee on that day. May 18th, actually we're going to get the first quarter uh, variance report at that point in time. July 6th, that's when uh, we start talking about uh, capping bylaws, unless the province actually follows through on something and tells us we don't have to do something. Keep your fingers crossed. August 17th, uh, we will present second quarter. And August the 7th, the bylaw with regards to capping will bring forward. November 16th, we'll present you with the third quarter budget to actual report. Here's a key date to bear in mind, December 16, you're going to get the new rules. 
That's going to show what your assessment is going to be next year. It's also when most of the assessment notices are going to go out, which means you're going to hear from a lot of people, probably with regards to what the changes in their values are. So in summary, we have roughly $620,000 in new growth that is available to us that we can uh, add to the funding of uh, programs and services without impacting on tax uh, rates. We have maintained the contributions to reserves and the program funding of amortization uh, as uh, we were directed to in previous uh, meetings with you. Total funding from the tax base will increase 3.34% net. We are maintaining existing mandated service levels. Funding to existing programs and services is increasing 2.22%, approximately consistent with the rate of inflation as it is currently set. There is no impact in the tax rate for 2016 from implementing the 10-year social housing plan. You'll recall that was one of the key factors that we brought to you on that one, is that we believed that we could bring it in without impacting the tax rate. We have done that. The six-year contractual grant to Lambton College is built into the budget already. The 2016 tax rates will be essentially unchanged from 2015 if the budget stays the way that it is. And since 2008, tax rates have declined a cumulative 12.01%. And that is the presentation for today, Madam Ward. Members of Council, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Ennis? Councillor Bradley. Yes, thank you very much. And um, just a question, the ongoing question, the last few years about the fines that have not been paid that the province was working on legislation to help us is has that progressed at all in for 216 sir is not very far um they are bringing in uh, uh we are told that we should be seeing uh, legislation sometime this year with uh, to eliminate what's referred to as cherry picking which is the ability to decide which of a number of fines you have outstanding you can pay and what often happens with that is that if there are five or six fines outstanding and the only one of them results in the suspension of a driver's license, that's the only one people pay, and then they ignore the rest. Otherwise, uh, locally what we've done, uh, and you were all are aware of this, I believe, uh, we've brought in and we're starting to do a bit more in tax rolling to try and take advantage of that last uh, existing um, uh, tool that had not been used uh, previously here. Uh, we're already beginning to see some results from that. The meeting groups are still meeting, but uh, quite frankly, it's something that uh, has seemed to have shift off the radar from the province. We continue to try and uh, push them to do things. Um, the biggest uh, implement, uh, impediment towards things happening right now is the fact that uh, it requires an update to the computer system that is used by MTO. And dare I say that the province has a dismal record in upgrading computer systems. So who knows when we're going to see that. Okay, thank you. Councillor Knapper. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam Warden. To, through you to John, uh, there's a great anticipation of the, the new government, the federal government, coming out with infrastructure money. Will that have a big impact on uh, if we were to get a lot of money? It, yes, we're all waiting for uh, for those details with bated breath. Um, you know, there was an announcement earlier this week that the province had come out with uh, some specific funding to help uh, social housing. When our staff looked into it, we found out that uh, the county isn't uh, eligible for it because it's either for, uh, to replace electric-based heating with uh, other materials or you have to have a high-rise building of at least 150 units, I believe it is and our maximum is less than 100. So we are waiting for the details. We are hoping that we are going to be uh, eligible for uh, the funding that is there. Uh, when we identify the, what is eligible, then we will sit down, we will take a look at how it impacts on the budget as it presented, and we'll provide the report for you at that point in time. There's two things that are sort of up in the air at this uh, right now. One is the fact that, uh, as you know, historically, the province and the federal government have required a one-third, one-third, one-third funding arrangement. 
there has been some discussion that they might soften that to eliminate the amount that local municipalities need to contribute towards that. The second aspect that is uh, normal in these is that it has to be incremental to the budgets as are currently set. So what we are doing is we are currently in the process of identifying additional and new projects that if funding became available that we could fast track and uh, bring uh, forward in order to access funding that is here. If the funding does come forward, it will go a long ways to helping increase the, uh, the dent, if you would, that we're making into the deficit on infrastructure. Uh, we will make sure that we are in a position to take advantage of whatever funding comes available to us. Councillor Case. Yeah, um, Warden, through you to Mr. Ennis. Mr. Ennis, that was something I was thinking about. You know, again, we don't know when these opportunities are going to come. I know uh, in following the press, there's going to be something quicker, sooner than later for Alberta. They're trying to fast track some of the situation there to create some positive opportunity with your economy. So in this budget here, we don't have anything that's fast tracked, uh, shovel ready that we've done, some of the engineering, some of the planning on the past. So if something comes along, because I've seen it before, where you, know, you anticipate you're going to have enough time to reach out to your engineers, gather that information, come up with the plan, but the first thing they do is they throw a whole lot of money at something right off the bat. And it makes it almost impossible to be shovel ready, if you want to use that term. So is there anything in this budget here, is there any dollars in this budget that are sitting there that could be utilized for such an opportunity if it came you know, out of left field real quickly? We've, uh, as a staff, we've been, uh, we've been discussing how best to, uh, to make sure that we're in a position to respond to this. Uh, so uh, in public works, I know that uh, Mr. Kativa and his staff are, are basically have a list of uh, projects that is available that they've done preliminary work on that uh, if we do get the word that the funding is there that we should be able to bring forward. Um, Mrs. Rushhorn has had her housing staff uh, look in two things. One is any projects that we have within this 10-year capital plan that we can actually move up uh, in order to take advantage of funding that is going to be there, and also whether or not uh, there are uh, partners in the community, in other words, private owners of uh, buildings that provide services uh, to social housing clientele that potentially would be willing to come forward with projects of their own as well. So we're doing a lot of that background work right now to try and make sure that uh, we have things that are there because, yes, we, uh, we know that if it comes forward, it's usually uh, Tuesday, give us your response by Friday. So we're trying to make sure that we're going to be in that position to do so. Councillor Bradley. I want to follow up on this because I think this is going to be a fundamental issue uh, as we get into this discussion on infrastructure funding. There's a huge difference between shovel ready and shovel worthy. And if you go back and look at the history of infrastructure spending over the last 20 or 30 years, municipalities end up offering the B, the C, and the D list. And I hope this government and I hope that we will take that same, the same approach to look at this and say, where's the real lasting job creation value? I would use the research park as an example or some of the other things that we've looked at that have more than just a, uh, an impact in the very short term. And so when you're looking at this list, and I mean the social housing project certainly has a long-term impact, but it's not just the B and the C and D list because I know we got, we've got into that list. Uh, if we thought it was that important, why wasn't it on the A list? And this is going to be probably the, the, the biggest expenditure in infrastructure funding in our, uh, in our recent history. So I hope that we can come back to other projects that are beyond just that immediate uh, satisfaction that the government wants, but that we want, but it will have a huge impact. And again, shovel-worthy. Mr. Ernest, do you have anything to add to that? I would, I would just simply say that, uh, yes, we agree that, that that has to be done, and there's a number of things that we're doing in the background uh, in order to make sure that uh, we are not simply providing uh, the also-rans, if you would. Um, social housing, uh, we have actually, uh, they were the first ones to make, uh, to utilize our asset management plan that we have in place. 
So we have the ability to go in and take a look at things and determine exactly what the impact of anything is going to be in order to make sure that we're maximizing uh, the benefit of getting dollars coming from that program. Uh, we are also uh, getting ready to roll out the asset management plan to the rest of the corporation. So I believe that uh, when the call comes and we get the information, that uh, we are in a very good place to make sure that we're not just shovel-ready, but shovel-worthy as well. Any other? Uh, Councillor Arnold. Thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, through you to Mr. Innes. When I go through, uh, and granted it's just a preliminary look at this, uh, the budget that's being proposed, but I have a real concern when we start looking at long-term debt capacity and utilization on uh, projects that really should be being funded through the TCA process. You know, we've set aside reserves, we've put money in place, and yet we're still growing the debt for roads, bridges, or whatever. And uh, I realize there's eight different TCA projects, um, four bridge projects in public works that we should really already have the money set aside or are trying to build that money to have set aside, and yet we're going out and boring on a long-term basis to do that. And in my humble opinion, realizing that we have a net reduction in our total borrowings, but at the same time, are we not being proactive enough to understand what our TCA projects that are needed to be done and the funding associated with them that we have to go out and borrow more money to prop that up? Because at one time, we didn't borrow for long-term projects, such as bridges or roads or anything like that. They were all just dealt with through the regular budgeting process, but we've gotten away from that. And now we're going out and adding more debt, although less debt than what we paid down. But that debt, instead of coming down $3.5 million, it's only going to come down net one or 1 1.2 or whatever. So are we living beyond our means yet, or are we just out of date on, or so far out of date on some of these uh, capital things that we need to have done that we have to continue to borrow for TCA projects that we should have been setting aside money for in the first place? Thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, the short answer to that is uh, your last point is, uh, is dead on. What we have here is the situation that uh, when in the early 90s, when of course uh, we, we saw all of the rejigging of the financing, the province eliminated its supplementals in uh, public works, and a number of other the changes happened, uh, we stopped spending and putting money aside uh, for uh, capital projects. Uh, um, and it wasn't just the county, it was virtually every uh, municipality in this province. You, mean council here, have uh, done some significant uh, work on trying to bring that back together. The first thing you did in the early 2000s was you... Uh, we did a one-time bump of funding towards uh, the program to try and put the money back into it. Five years ago, we started a program to direct funds towards um, the uh, funding of amortization. We're only halfway through that. So what we have here is we're gradually hoping to reduce the debt and bring that down as the funding comes from the other level and goes up so that we will at some point in time be in the point where we do not have to borrow. That is the ultimate goal. We're not there yet. It, it's interesting, though, um, in response to an inquiry from a member of council, we were looking at uh, numbers from 1990. And it's one of the things that struck me in that number was in 1990, we were spending approximately 16 to $17 million a year on capital projects. What are we spending in 2016? 16 to 17 million dollars, which means that in terms of real dollars, we're spending less today than we were in 1990. The problem we're running into is that the dollars are getting so large that uh, you know the the increase in spending that would be necessary to maintain that real level of uh, of uh, contributions towards that is uh, not something that is realistic to bring in. We're trying to get there slowly over a period of time. But, uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've identified the fact that uh, we are uh, not making a, sig a significant impact on our uh, TCAs as we need to. As a matter of fact, uh, we will be bringing, staff will be bringing forward a report on that later this year to talk about what the implications are on that and provide some further recommendations. And I think that the asset management plan, when it is brought in as well, will help make that uh, easier to deal with as well. 
follow up from Councillor Arnold and then Councillor Case. Well, and I guess that's my, uh, I guess the question, John, is that to make sure that we are adequately funding the TCA project schedule so that we can continue to move that forward without having to go back out to borrowing. And, it, you know, I know you're trying to balance that fine line because it is to try and let you continue to drop your debt but maintain that spending in the areas that we need to to keep current. And, and I guess I look forward to the next report to make sure that we're going to have adequate funding in place to do that because it, you're absolutely right. I sat here in those days and, and it was a fight to try and maintain that and we lost it after that for a time. And as Mr. Katiba remembers that we were going backwards in a lot of things that uh, we couldn't have or shouldn't have. And then now with the asset management program, you don't have a choice. You need to maintain that level of spending and the province recognized that as well. So, so I guess we look forward to the next report and hopefully we maintain that level. Councillor Case. Yeah, Madam Warden, Matt, back through you to Mr. Innes. Just a point. It's great that our debt capacity were, is where it is, uh, Mr. Innes. You've done a terrific job uh, in managing that for quite a few years. I'm very, very impressed with what you've done. At the same time, in a world of a lot of unknowns that we have right now, we still are experiencing very low interest rates. But it looks to be that the interest rates are going to go up eventually. And it looks like sooner than later this time. I know it's been said over the last few years that that's going to happen. But it looks like it really is going to happen at this point in time. So being that we do have capacity within our debt, I wonder, and this is just a point, I wonder if we should be looking at maybe trying to get more done now where we have the room and we can take advantage of those very, very reasonable interest rates. It's a hard, for me, hard thing for me to say because on one side of the coin, I've always appreciated the fact we want to keep the taxes low. The local, um, the other municipalities within the Federation are experiencing some very tough times. But I think it's only good business to take a look at those things, and that's what we'll do during this deliberation. But at the same time, I don't know where interest rates are going. I'm not an economist, thank God. I'm not because I need a crystal ball, and I'd probably be not accurate anyways. But I do think that we have to try to maybe look at taking advantage of that situation where we are right now as well. So, again, the unknown with uh, the stimulus project uh, program that's going to be coming from the feds is, again, we don't know the, what the details are going to be, but I just wonder if maybe we shouldn't be looking at that as a group as well. So just a comment. Thank you. Councillor McGugan. Yeah, thank, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Ward and kind of councillors. Uh, through you to Mr. Innes. Uh, this is an old topic that I've had the opportunity to talk to the Premier about once. Uh, in 2016, how much money is the province uploading from the county? And in theory, that should gradually work down to a little municipality like mine. Or do we know where we are in that, Mr. Innes? If you'll look at the slide here, one of the, th the first one that we have um, on the second category of net increased revenue to cost mitigations, the amount of uploaded uh, or, or costs that were uploaded to the province in 2016 or were expected to be uploaded from uh, Ontario Works is $767,233 is our best estimate. And again, uh, that monies were taken into account as part of uh, the 10-year capital plan, and uh, we're using some of those dollars uh, towards uh, mitigating the cost of uh, increasing the spending on social housing because it's within the same envelope. But that's how much is in 2016. Follow-up, Councillor McGugan. Uh, uh, really helped me very much, will it, in Brooke Elves? It will help you in the fact that if we didn't have this, we would be talking instead of a 3.34% increase in taxation, we would have been talking a 4.35% increase in taxation. So does it help uh, you as the mayor? No. Does it help your ratepayers? We believe it does because it means that everybody in the county is paying less than they would have been paying otherwise in order to do what we're proposing here. Any other questions? Seeing none, just before I look for a motion to adjourn, um, announcing to the 
press that uh, staff will be happy to meet with you upstairs in committee room two if you have any further questions. Now I'd look for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Broad, second by Councillor Bruzewitz. All in favour? That motion is carried. Thank you very much and we'll resume for afternoon committee at one. <laughs>